The other indication besides the naming and the series and all of that that seems to be well thought out, they tuned it very nice. Okay, so video for a set called Mercury by a company called Open Audio Studio. Never heard of it before. Um, Elements series, this is the element Mercury. It's a single dynamic, four balanced armature set, so it's a hybrid. Um, so the, the presentation is very nice. The idea with the series named after Elements, you're already jumping over half of the hobby because you've got some idea that you can keep going with. Uh, so I was, I like that. I'm hoping to look online and find other elements. Um, ideally, one of the elements would be something affordable so that you could pull in a fan base and then they would step up to stuff that's in this price range. Um, and for me as a reviewer, it would be easier to introduce. This, this, this price is, it's not cheap, but let's talk about the set itself. The shells are beautiful. This is like the peacocks where they're painted from the inside of the shell. So it's got a very nice shine to it because the paint is, it's on the inside, like the, like the peacocks. It's got a flush two pin, it looks like, and then it's got the breather hole right next to the, where the ear hook and the pin termination is. It's a beautiful, it fits good. It's absolutely gorgeous. The cable is actually quite nice as well. It's like a like a graphite in color type. It's 3.5 as all my sets have to be, so it can go into the ADI2 deck. It's got a nice little puck. And then it's got something called ear fits. I don't know if that's a proprietary tip thing. Tip rollers can comment. Doesn't look like anything special. It's got a, a wipe to keep your beautiful shells nice and clean. The other indication besides the naming and the series and all of that that seems to be well thought out, they tuned it very nice. It's got a sub bass over mid bass profile. It's got a substantial sub bass. Um, listening to, uh, let me talk about the graph first. It's got a substantial sub bass over mid bass, but the mid bass corrects itself for my graph at right about 100 hertz, which is kind of amazing. And then it follows my target, gets down into the mids, and then it's got uh, uh, upper mids. It's very much like the Odin or the Legend X, very much like the Legend X actually, um, and the Odin I think as well. And then it's got it's decay, it's got a 4.5 killer, it's a little notch there, and then it goes off the scale uh, in a like kind of a waterfall way, which is what I'd be looking for and hoping for. In listening, Big Boy Kill Jill, the triple drop and the four string bass guitar are exactly how I'd like them to be. They're not really getting in the way as when I listen to vocals and other tracks coming, I start to realize that that boosted sub bass like other things, um, like variations in Monarch where it's got a lot of energy in the sub bass, it's only applicable if there's actually info there. And the mid bass on this set is tuned the way that I actually prefer, so it's a combo that I don't have a lot of in my library. That much sub bass and mid bass that matches my target, and mids that match my target. To, till you get to the upper mids where this is a little bit forward. So Big Boy Kills Joe sounds great. The surprise for me was listening to Black Sabbath Sweet Leaf because the, the, it's being advertised with a PU driver, which I think stands for polyurethane. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Please do in the comment section below. So they're not touting this unbelievable tech. Sometimes you see these claims that are just, um, you know it's all hype. They're not even really going there with this that I can tell. But the quality of the driver listening to the Sweet Leaf, where the drummer and the bassist are kind of crowd each other and maybe some masking can go on, and is an indication of driver quality. And also planars do that really well. That's kind of one of the benefits of planar to my ears using my library is the ability to resolve this almost perfectly. Um, this does very well. I was expecting maybe to be less because again, PU, I think stands for polyurethane. That means they're not claiming any special coating or any nothing, no diamond like this or any of that stuff. And it performs really, really well. Um, it didn't get in the way. When I listened to Fleetwood Mac rumors, actually, let me let me back up for a second. Listening to mid bass, Sultans of Swing, 
Um, I'm listening to here if the mid bass sounds like it's a little bit too elevated um, or a little bit recessed because that'll reflect in the. When you think of this track, you're thinking of Mark Knopfler's iconic guitar play and the lyrics of the song. You don't listen. You don't think of the bassist in the song because he's pinning down the track and he's not supposed to be in your face. But he's also not supposed to be back sounding like he's standing next to the drummer and Mark's all by himself. It, it's supposed to sound between the two. He's pinning down the trap, but he's not getting in the way to the point where people cite this song as a great example of bass guitar, because it's, it's Mark's song. This does it the way that I want it done. The bass sounds proper. He sounds slightly prominent, but he's backed off compared to Mark Knopfler. The frequency graph would indicate this. How much does that much sub-bass add to the bass guitar? M not much, actually. In, the replay, because um, I thought it sounded good. Mark sounded great. He's the center of the show. So I thought the mid bass sounded quite good. As we transition to the mids, and we listen to stuff like Fleetwood Mac Rumors, where we've got a lead singer and then maybe three in a chorus, or two and two, and uh, rhythm guitar, acoustic guitar, some drum, not a lot of stuff going on. It's very, very vocal centric. You can get a feel for, on the graph, this looks just a tad scooped relative to the gain. I didn't ever feel like the vocals were a little distant like I, I do. There's another track called Tin Man by America where I, that really steps out. Wasn't the case, actually. I thought the vocals sounded good on this. One album, or yeah, one album actually, Neil Young. Um, Neil's got a nasally voice, and th th this sounded like it kind of emphasized that just a little bit to my ears. But I'm listening to him to see if that's going to happen. Sometimes it's going to. Um, it usually will because that's how his voice actually sounds, kind of nasally. So that was, in fact, the case. When I get to the upper mids and treble and I start focusing on, particularly the treble, on cymbal strikes. The cymbal strikes sound prominent, but the decay sounds accurate. Um, keyboards, stuff like uh, ELO, um, Michael Jackson, want to be starting something, things with some high energy up high in the register. Uh, all sounds proper. Listening to live stuff like uh, Frampton Comes Alive, um, Little Feet, Dixie Chicken, um, the live Freebird version from One More From The Road by Leonard Skinner. That sense of, remember these are earplugs in your ear, so you're, if you feel like you're amongst a crowd at a live event, it's a total illusion because of the graph and the way that it's being manipulated because this is blocking outside sound. Um, but yet some sets do sound more like they're engaging in a way that makes you feel like you're present amongst musicians and other people. And other sets don't do that, usually related to maybe too much uh, a lack of treble or too much bass or some combination of the two will kind of diminish that. And this set actually sounded quite good with live replay. The energy on the low end kind of helped with that without impacting the clarity of the vocals because it's kind of corrected itself. So um, I'm impressed with this set. If I were to rate the bass, I'd give it a 4 out of 5, with my ideal being right over there, the Elysian X, being a 5 out of 5. Um, I would rate the mids a 3 out of 5. It would be close. I'd prefer a little bit less in the upper mids, but it didn't diminish the quality of my uh, enjoyment at all. I was very surprised by this set. Um, I give the treble a... Uh, uh, I guess a 4 out of 5. It's got proper extension, the K sounds great, the 4.5 doesn't really jump out to me. Uh, it's a good set, it sounds nice. For people that are, who's the target of this? Two points let me make before I close this out. This is a great set. You, you got to have a set that's budget-ish so that you can pull in a fan base, like Tin Hi Fi and Belon and other companies did. They built that and then they tried to grow and it, depending on, they got smacked down depending on the effort that they put in and uh, with people getting real returns for their investment by in investing more into those companies. This company needs to go the other way and release a budget set so that they can show people what they can do, the quality of their builds, people can see QC over a larger sample size. And then when you have a set that's like this, it's beautiful, it sounds good, and it's priced a little bit above some people's uh, comfort zone, particularly for a company they've never heard of, if they're familiar with that company already, they, they'd be easier to reach and spend because they'd say, they built this, I like that, I'm going to invest in them because people are brand loyal. So my suggestion would be keep going with the series um, and introduce a affordable member of the Element series and pull in a group of people that will be aware. You get brand awareness. 
Um, if it's a good set, you'll get some loyal fans, and then you will direct more people towards these more pricey sets because you've built a level of trust. It's hard for me to put you out there and say, these are awesome. When nobody's heard of you, I can say, holding this in my hand, it, it's, the build is beautiful. It plays back my library very well. But uh, when people look at the price, they're still going to say, man, that's, that's a chunk for a company I've never heard of. Everything looks legit. Uh, get a budget set. And for people that have ever, ever bought Empire Years Odin um, or the Legend X, if you, you know, got married, you had kids, a little too expensive, but you like that kind of fun but not ridiculous tuning, um, this is something you ought to take a look at. Or pay more attention to people as they get this and then ask them to compare it to some stuff um, that if you've had the Empire Years Legend X or you've had the Odin, to mm, ask for specifics. I would say that these are mm, in that wheelhouse. And for the price, yeah. Good job. Very nice. Um, looking forward to reviewing future open audio stuff, element series or otherwise. But I hope to keep this element series going. And I'm out. Come on.